It is a great honor to be able to sit with you here in Switzerland and see all of your beautiful faces, so many different colors and places that you come from, so many backgrounds. When I look out, I, I see my family, the tribe of many colors, and I am just, I'm really pleased to be here with you today. It was several months ago that I was at another workshop working in, in Arizona, in the United States. And I went outside to say my prayers, as I do every night. And I was shown something very particular. I was shown a very beautiful city. And the bells were ringing. And in front of me stood this great big building, which I thought was a church. And it was lit with lights around it. And I was told to go to Switzerland, that the people needed to hear the message. And I said, okay, I will go. And it wasn't a week later that I received Vietcam's invitation. And I said, yes, I will go, knowing that I had to go to Switzerland. And today, as I was saying my prayers just right outside, the bells started chiming. And I looked up at this building with the lights around it. And I realized I was here. I was seeing it for the second time. So I know I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. My name is Keisha Crowther, and I come from a very, very small town in Colorado. And ever since I was a child, I was able to see energy inside of anything that was alive. Many colors vibrate through anything that is alive. And I've been able to be able to speak to animals and hear what they have to say from a very young age. And most people think that would be really cool, but as a little kid, I knew that I was very, very different. And so this made my life very hard, not being like everyone else. And I was learning lessons from the other side. A voice would teach me very specifically things that I needed to learn so that one day I would be able to teach these things. But for a long time, I, I just thought I was crazy. I thought I was different and I didn't understand why I was hearing and being taught from a voice. I didn't understand why I was seeing energy or why I could hear animals. And for a long time, I just thought I didn't have a place in this world. But when I turned 30, I received a phone call from the indigenous tribes of North America and an elder told me they knew that I was being taught by the other side since a very young age. And they told me it was time for me to become the one to be called Little Grandmother and become a shaman and a wisdom teacher. And that there were others just like me. There were 11 others wisdom keepers who were just like me receiving the same messages. And we had a very important role to play on planet Earth. I was not raised to be a public speaker and so this is very hard for me, I'm still learning. But I did promise to, to be the best wisdom keeper I could be, and to be the best shaman that I could be. And so although it is scary, I am here to teach you about the lessons I was taught from the other side, from Mother Earth and from my indigenous elders, the, the Continental Council of Indigenous Elders. A long time ago on planet Earth, something incredible happened and the poles shifted. And the people living at that time, a long time ago, were the Atlanteans, the Lumerians, and the Sumerians. They were very real people not things that you read in story tales or fairy tales. They were very real. They were our ancestors. And when the poles shifted, an ice age began. And they started to go through this ice age. And then when the ice started to melt, the waters came up and started taking over their lands. And when the waters rose, they got into their different ships and went to different places of our planet and started living in different areas of our continents. The Mayan people are Atlanteans. The Aborigine people are Atlanteans. 
the Hawaiian peoples and the peoples of the Indonesian islands are the Sumerian people. The Wataha people of New Zealand are Lumerians. And so their ancient teachings and their ancient wisdoms are still alive on our planet today. Mm-hmm. Their ancestors held these truths, and now these truths are being asked to give it back to the people. Their prophecies, these people's prophecies, for hundreds of years have been talking about a time on our planet when the poles would shift again, and now it is upon us. For hundreds and hundreds of years, the prophecies from indigenous tribal people have been saying, A time would come when Mother Earth would shift and be reborn into her heaven. And at this time, the people living on planet Earth would have to switch from living from a mind consciousness into a heart consciousness if they wish to enlighten during this shift. They spoke of a people who would come to the planet, the strongest of the strong of all souls and all spirits to arrive. And these people would shift the consciousness from mind consciousness into heart consciousness and change the world. And these people would be called the tribe of many colors. And we are the tribe of many colors. It is us that they were talking about. We are the ones we have been waiting for. The pole shift is happening. It is not going to happen. It has already begun. It is no longer a story that the elders are saying will happen. They are saying it is happening. Due North is no longer due North. It is changing all over the planet. And the poles will not stop shifting until it is completely shifted. A universal truth that we must understand is that Mother Earth is sacred to all beings. And we, the human beings living upon her, will not be allowed to kill her. And yet we have come very, very close. We have done things that we do not have answers for. We have done things to planet Earth that none of our science has a way to fix. We are the ones that must change the way we are living. There is no other people to come and save us. There is no savior to come and save us. It is us that must save us. The ozone layer is disappearing. The planet's temperature has risen in two degrees. Although two degrees does not affect the human body, it affects wildlife immensely. The temperature of the water tells the fish when to give birth or when not to. And now the fish are not spawning. Some fish spawn year-round now because the jellyfish wait for only two days out of the year for the temperatures to be warm and when the jellyfish know it is this warm they give birth to thousands of babies and now the water stays this temperature always now the whole seas the chinese seas only have jellyfish there are no fish left two degrees allow bugs and insects to live in the north where the arctic animals live and now These animals have never had insects and now the insects are there and they're killing thousands and thousands of all of the caribou and the polar bears are dying. It's killing many. We are the only living species on Mother Earth that create trash. And there is a mass of trash that is of plastic larger than the size of Texas sitting in the Atlantic Ocean. And something more serious is the Gulf of Mexico's oil spill. It is much worse than anyone is speaking about. It only takes 30 days of oil to spill to kill the entire Gulf, and it spilt well over 90 days. The entire Gulf of Mexico is dead. All life is dead in the Gulf of Mexico. Even the oxygen is dead in the water. All of the sea turtles spawn and give birth in the Gulf of Mexico. They are all dying. The oil moves faster than the whales can swim. 90% of all big fish are gone. It is not just the Gulf of Mexico's problem, but the Gulf Stream flows through the Gulf and comes straight to Europe, and it is full of oil. Underneath where it spilled, is a chamber larger than Mount Everest, 
full of oil and toxic gas that is large enough to split North America in two. Even if the smallest amount of gas leaks out, it will kill life in 20 miles inward of land automatically. And that's just if the smallest amount leaks out. We have done damage that we have no answers for. All of the science in the entire world does not have an answer to fix this. We have all but killed our Mother Earth. And yet she still keeps giving us our every breath, every drink of water we have ever swallowed, every meal we have ever eaten, because she loves us. We must have a relationship with our Mother Earth. She is your mother. It is a universal law that Mother Earth is sacred to all beings. And it is a universal law that Mother Earth will go on but that humanity will be removed before we kill her. And so now we realize how important the next couple of years are. The poles are already shifting. She will be reborn. But if we wish to go with her, we must start living from the heart. The more loving you are, the more intelligent you become. It is our only chance. This is not a story. This is really happening. This is real. So many of us are going throughout our days not even being aware of what is happening. But this is happening. Instead of living in fear, what the grandfathers are telling us is to start living from the heart. Because the more loving you are, the more intelligent you become. If we start being love, we get the answers of how to save our planet then we get to stay. If we do not, our children will not have a future. This really is our situation. Right now, we have no answers on how to heal the wounds on Mother Earth. But we can get the answers if we start living from our hearts and not our brains. And it is not another generation of people that were chose to be here on this planet now. You were chosen because it is said that we are the strongest of strong souls ever to be on planet Earth. Each and every one of us were born to a world with man-made rules and man-made religion. And now we must say we want more. There is more. The only way we change ourselves and save ourselves is if we remember who we are. We were taught that God is something disconnected from us. We were taught by religion that we are sinful and bad people and that we have to deserve heaven. But I am to tell you something today that you should never forget. You are God. Your soul is God. You are not separate from God. Every single one of you have a great I am that is God. Your soul, your great I am, is part of great spirit. God is not a man and God is not a woman. God is knowing. God is everything. God is light and love in all creation. God made your soul and your soul lives in you. You are God. Every single one of us have a great I am. And it was your great I am that decided to send you here. You chose to come. Ask yourselves, why did I choose to come? Your great I am is in charge of you down here. You decided to send a spark of you here to planet Earth. And every experience you have, every interaction with another person or plant or animal is an experience your great I am is handing you. And so there are no mistakes and there is no sin. You are here to learn. Earth life is a school. Everything that you experience every day, whether it looks good or bad, is a learning experience. And you can learn and grow from every experience, whether it looks good or bad, hard or easy.